Huh? Did you know how to do it? You know, pushing over the red yeah. thing. <laughs> he said, well, "But we were, um, <laughs> we were talking about, uh, we were, no, we were talking about uh, the um, um, lifestyles of people, and we were talking about homosexual lifestyle, and and you made the statement that what?" No. Female impersonator. Well, well, yeah, but well, female impersonators, there's a difference between a female impersonator and a transvestite, okay? Yeah, well, well all right, no, yeah, gay bashing, but let, let's say for a minute, between a female impersonator as an entertainer, um, a transvestite is, is somebody who really fulfills themselves becoming female, and that can go all the way through the physical. We've seen them in Key West. Struck down the street, you know, in their gold sequined evening gowns and high heeled shoes and so forth. But as far as gay bashing was concerned, what did you say? I said, I think people that get all upset about gays are trying to deny the little bit that's in them. That's a good point. Freedom. You know, the problem that I have, and when I hear it from Trinity Broadcasting or Christian places, is the fact that it is antichrist to do that because it is Jesus Christ who makes the specific statement talking about eunuchs and in that time not all eunuchs were those who were castrated there were people who were effeminate people and he makes the specific statement some are born that way from their mother's womb and that's totally you know eliminated from 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 the Christian ethic as far as understanding this particular problem. Some are born that way. And then he, he, he says something else very strange. He says some are made that way for the kingdom of God. You know? And like we were saying this morning, and as some of you didn't get a chance to hear that, there's three people who are homosexuals in the Christian community that if you would take them away what would you have? One of, the, one of the homosexuals in the Christian community is Leonardo da Vinci, who painted the Last Supper. He was not only a homosexual, he was an astrologer. And probably the most famous Christian painting ever made was by this guy. And he was the one who painted a picture of John lying his head on Jesus' breast. And he was a homosexual. And he painted Judas as the eighth sign of Saturn from the right. He was an astrologer. Now, there's a second homosexual, very famous homosexual and Christian, Michelangelo. Michelangelo filled the Vatican with, picture, uh, with statues of nude men all over the place. Even in the, even in the post parlor, he's got a, a nude guy in there. And what they did, probably the most, one of the most famous male nude statues in the world, created by Michelangelo, in order to get it into the church, he just titled it David. There's a third. And that's probably the most interesting, because you wouldn't have this Bible without this homosexual. His name was King James of England. He was gay. So there's the three of them. Oh, oh there's many more. <laughs> yeah, there's many more. But I would say, what do you do? Here's you got the most famous painting, The Last Supper. You've got probably the most famous statue, David, and you got the famous King James Bible. Three gay guys. How do you know King James was gay? Well, because history. You have to read, you read the historical facts. He was gay. He was a homosexual. He was a homosexual. <laughs> I mean, it's nothing, you know, that, they, they didn't hide that. His homosexual activities were very well known. But you have to read history in order to you know, find that King James of England, who was responsible for the translation of this book, was gay. It, uh, yeah, I know. Uh, uh, we've been having time. I, I think it's in. Uh, I think it's that thing. Anyhow, um, th those are interesting things. And you know, like what, what he says. How do you know? You have to read. You have to study. And that's where Christians have a problem. I don't mean any aspersions on him. I'm talking about Christianity in general has a problem. They're not allowed to read. They're not allowed to study. And they're not allowed to discuss with one another the facts. So they never know. I have no idea. No way of knowing these things. Because nobody tells them. They pick up the King James Bible and they say this is the only true edition. I seem to, I kind of agree with it. But that doesn't change the fact that the guy who authored it, or the guy who was responsible for commissioning it, was gay. 
King James of England. Well, and as you said, Arlene, there was many others who, you know, who took part and, and were involved in, in these types of things. And, you know, it's, it's, it's simply that it's fashionable. You know, you have the, you have the people who shoot people on the streets uh, today, and, uh, and then, of course, they're fundamentalists, and then you have the fundamentalists in religion. You have the Falwells and the, and the Robertsons, and they don't have to shoot people, but they, they manufacture all of this political hoopla and, you know, send the boys over there to do this thing. What I thought <coughs> we'd talk about for a few minutes, because, yes? Wait, 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 wait. You can't, because you, you got to stand up, if, you know, because you see in the back of your head. Wasn't well, homosexuality more acceptable then? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. In fact, what they used to do in order to try to control the population in places like Greece is that they would ask people to abstain from having sexual intercourse with their wives, and they'd provide little boys. Pedophilia was a, <laughs> was a very, very prominent thing that went on in Greece and became, you know, a part of the Christian culture was the, what we talked about, the little boys who sing in the boys' choirs and so forth and so on because they didn't allow women to go on the altar. So they had to have somebody to hit those soprano notes and they had little boys. But pedophilia was a very prominent thing practiced by people such as the Ilka Socrates. And, and it was just never, 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 never thought about anything like that. In fact, it was a, it was, it was a mark of distinction. They used to carry these kids along to, in, in battle. So, you know, it, and, 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 and then, of course, when you hear a lot about it in the activity of it in some religious circles, you say, geez, you haven't, really haven't come a long way. And, of course, such a, a horror like that, um, it's, it's, it's really difficult for me to understand how, with any institution, you can simply just throw it under the rug and go on about your business and say business as usual. Because, as, as Joan says, and if, you know, this is what's so important. If people would get out of church and go into the library and start opening up books and look at the history of these things, they probably would never go back inside the churches. Because they are violent, corrupt places who are built on the blood and sex beyond belief. And, and, and they talk about pornography. And all this pedophilia stuff and all of this sex, and all, it, 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 was just, it was rampant in the early days of, 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 of church, of Christianity, of all, of all religions. I think probably the only religion that I've ever studied that seems to be free of most of the, the trappings that we find and we're talking about is Buddhism. And of course, I don't know even when you go into homosexuality if that's the case, but the violent aspect of it uh, seems to be pretty true. Uh, in Buddhism, they even have their um, uh, monks abstain from, from work, at least they did in the early days, because they were afraid that going out and doing work in the fields, they would hurt animals and, and things like that, you know. So, <coughs> this, this, is, this is the important thing. This, this is the point that we have gone into churches and we have taken as, quote-unquote, gospel, what was said to us by some man who heard it from somebody else who in turn was taught by somebody else, who got it out of a book that has been changed 50 million times by anybody, you know, they just sit down and change the thing over and over again, and we just accept all of this stuff as absolute truth and have no understanding where it came from. And so then when you hear things, like, I mean, this is, this is the shocker of the night, evidently. King James, who authored the Bible, was homosexual. Shocked. But all you got to do is look at a book. Look it up. Look at a history book. And there it is. But nobody does that. Because you're not allowed to speak those things. But you have to, if you're, if you're going to be mature. And what we've done, we've subjected a whole culture to all of this uh, sexual kind of uh, depravity, and we've subjected our kids to it. And I think the basis of it has been fear and guilt, which we've authored mo me mostly out of religion. Okay. Yes. You have to, you, you, people can't hear you. Yes. But then do you know, like, historically, then what happened to make it so unacceptable? What do you mean? To, to be against the norm. Now homosexuality is not considered, you know, in, in our circles as being normal, mm -hmm. okay, so-called normal. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that that's how we feel here. Mm -hmm. So do you know, like, in the evolution of it, like, what happened? Was, did the church come in and say it was unacceptable? Yeah, the, the, uh, the, church, the church basically uh, made a statement that uh, the Bible is the literal and unerring word of God, 
And there are statements in the Bible against homosexuality. Okay. Okay. So that makes it evil. The fact that Jesus said that there are uh, eunuchs born that way from their mother's womb is completely disregarded. The mm -hmm. fact the Apostle Paul says that the carnal mind is not subject to the law of God is completely disregarded. And the fact that the Bible is symbolic. Now, when you talk about homosexuality in the Bible from a spiritual standpoint, you're talking about male intercoursing with male, which would be mind intercoursing with the flesh. Mm -hmm. Basically, what is then said, no, you must have a wife, which is male mind intercoursing with female spirit. Mm -hmm. Okay? Has nothing to do. I mean, just, just analyze or, or think for a minute. If indeed homosexuality is this evil, then God is evil. Mm -hmm. I mean, because the, the creation, I mean, they can talk to me all they want, and, and, and you, I, I can line up just as many scientists to show. I mean, you take, a, who, who's the perfect example? Liberace could never be anything mm -hmm. but what he was. Mm -hmm. He was not a macho person. He was an mm -hmm. effeminate person. And the man tried, and under all types of guilt and pain, he even got married, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. But why couldn't we honor the man for his talent and allow the man's life to be his own? Mm -hmm. We're content with that. But the guilt and the sword throwers of, of religion uh, put that man through, and, and so many people mm -hmm. through the guilt and, and all of these types of things. Well, do you think they did a lot of it then as a cover-up too? Coming at it like a Aileen said so much that, you know, like when we see the dark side in us that we will come against it so much, do you think that maybe that happened too? I think there's a lot of that that goes on because if you, if you look at, for instance, uh, the evangelist, uh, the swagger, for instance, uh, he was always pointing a finger at people about their sexual mm -hmm. things, and then he was sneaking out the back door, mm -hmm. you see. Yeah. And maybe it was a way of justifying what he was doing mm -hmm. by pointing a finger of guilt at anybody else, then, you know, you could justify. You, you, you somehow, uh, I mean, he didn't actually have sex. He, what he did, he would go into these motel rooms and masturbate while this, so then he could say, well, he didn't, he didn't actually have physical sex, so he could mm -hmm. justify this. Mm -hmm. So then he could point the finger at other people, and yet he was still satisfying whatever problems he had, okay? Mm -hmm. There's that. Then uh, there's this, this terrible mania about giving, you know, slamming people for how much money they get. And, and I think what Aline said just, is justifiable in there, too, because so many, so many of them are stealing it. And, and you know, and, and that's been proven and shown on television. Here you had a guy like Jim Baker who had a lot of good qualities to him. But, you know, what did he do? He would say, uh, Albert, if you'll, if you'll give $1,000... We have records here of people who have called us and said that God has multiplied this ten times. Oh, here's a lady that gave $1,000 and her husband just got a new job. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that happened. If you have 50 million people watching something, there's somebody who gave $1,000 and her husband got a new job. But everybody else who got $1,000 got ripped off, mm -hmm. you know? But that's, you know, that and that. And, 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 but but you, you cover this stuff by trying to find some spiritual motive and spiritual reasoning behind it. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in the question of homosexuals, I mean, in, in, in the church, in, you know, hey, in the Catholic Church, there's evidently a, a, a tremendous population of homosexuals mm -hmm. in the church, uh, which is fine, you know, but just admit it. You know, mm -hmm. don't try to say does, it doesn't exist because it does, mm -hmm. you know. And if you just come out and say, well, this is the way it is, mm -hmm. and honor these people and let them, you know, express themselves, fine. Mm -hmm. Who cares? Mm -hmm. It's their business. Mm -hmm. But when you try to cover it up and then you have all these hideous things happening behind the altar with pedophilia and all of this stuff, uh, then it traces itself right back to the, to the beginnings of where it came from. And, it, and, and basically the, the, the hotbed of pedophilia, child abuse, was Greece, Greece. where you know, uh, much of this Christian religion came from. Mm -hmm. you know, it's a hotbed of it. So you know, who knows? But uh, it's, uh, I think it's an interesting... It's an, it's an interesting thing for a period of time to have developed where people can start holding these people accountable. We haven't reached that stage. People are still afraid of pastors and ministers and evangelists and so forth. But, you know, they're at a point now of, 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 of just almost self-destruction with the violence that's going on among them. And, you know, it's, it's, it's time to start holding them accountable. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, anything else? Yes. Oh, wait, you have to... Uh, Stand up and uh, <laughs> yes. And basically, uh, didn't the Catholics emphasize procreation? Yeah. It was very important for. Uh, it's them extremely to important. That's extremely important, and that's a good point. But that is not uh, only in Catholicism. Mormonism uh, allowed people to have more than one wife because you need to build. You know, in other words, it would be if I if we had a structured church in here. I mean, we don't know who comes in the door, who goes out the door, you know. But if we had a structure, it would be great, uh, you know, if you encourage people to have four or five wives and bring them down here. And you, you build a tremendous, uh, uh, you know, group uh, of people. 
So, but that's true. Procreation was a, was a very important part. And uh, basically, the Catholic Church's philosophy, as I understood it, and I, I can be wrong because I'm, I'm stepping over the line a little bit and I haven't studied this one, but that sexual intercourse should be only for that purpose. And that is, is that right? And that, yeah, only for the purpose <coughs> of having children. And, 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 you know, of course, that goes just entirely counter to, you, to nature, uh, and, and so it's never been able to work. And then within the structure of the, of the church itself, you have these, these terrible things which have happened. Of course, in our culture today, we've gotten a little bit out of hand with people being hypnotized and, you know, re remembering that 20 years ago somebody, you know, you know. So that's the way things go. But uh, it's, it's an interesting thing. Um, well, we're going to do Buddha, <laughs> well, that, whatever little time we have to do anything. How long have we been speaking here? <laughs> 45 minutes. No, have we really? Well, it's 20 after Yeah, well, don't tell them out there because it could be 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Let, let me just show you something that's interesting, and, I'll, um, you know, it, it, won't take, uh, it won't take you, it won't take us very long. I wanted to share something with you um, in Buddhism that I think is interesting. It's very short, and yet uh, I, we did it a long time ago. I think you'll find it fun. Um, and this is the ascension of Buddha. Uh, Buddha had his ascension about a thousand years before Jesus had his ascension. Okay, um, and it says in First Thessalonians four seventeen, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Okay, now we're going to rise and meet the Lord in the air. Very important when you see something like that, that you understand the five stages of consciousness that start with earth, water, air, fire, and the renewed mind. The third stage of consciousness is air. So when it says we're going to rise to meet Christ in the air, where did Jesus say we would find him? Inside of us. He didn't say anything about being out over Kennedy Airport or up in the stratosphere. He knew better. When we say we will rise to meet Jesus in the air, it means you rise to the third stage of consciousness and where you will meet Jesus, which is very interesting. Now, looking at 1 Thessalonians where it says we will rise to meet him in the air, Shakyamuni Buddha taught everything hinged on an event in history called the ceremony of the air. Okay? The ceremony of the air. And it's a vision of Shakyamuni Buddha and how he foresaw this beauty of the Lotus Sutra, which is the study of, 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 of pain and suffering and an inner renewal encompassing the entire world. And there's a ceremony when all who follow and chant and end, endlessly lift themselves in consciousness come to this mountain. And the name of the mountain is called Eagle's Peak. That's where the ceremony took place. Eagle's Peak. Okay. And what happens, now this being the um, stage of, of consciousness that we're talking about, Shakyamuni ascends into the air himself, okay, in exactly the same way as Jesus did. You know, lift off and off he went. But of course, Buddha ascension was about a thousand years before Jesus. Now, as he goes and he's raising himself up, there's this magnificent treasure tower. Now this treasure tower is encrusted with dazzling jewels and the tower is suspended in the air and Shakyamuni Buddha goes up, like going up in an elevator, to meet it. And as Shakyamuni gets up near the treasure tower, the doors open and revealing the great god, and look what his name is, Taho. Whether he was any th relation to the lake, Taho, I don't know. But there he was. Taho was sitting in the treasure tower as the jewel doors opened up. And Taho is seated inside the tower, and Shakyamuni Buddha enters the tower and sits at the right hand of Taho. Okay? Sits at the right hand of Taho. Now, it says in Mark 14, 62, You shall see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. There's a real problem here. Okay, let me show you the problem which has been totally misinterpreted and misunderstood in religious circles forever, and that is the phrase, son of man. It does not mean Jesus. 
Okay? The Son of Man is not Jesus. The Son of Man is the offspring of the mind. You shall see. What? That which is the mind, those which are the desires of the mind, those which are the new enlightenment of the mind, sitting at the right hand of power, which is the right hemisphere of the brain, coming in the clouds of heaven, which is the unseen spirit in the higher level of consciousness. That's what Son of Man is. Okay. Mark 16, 19, it says, After the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up in heaven and sat at the right hand of God. Here's Shakyamuni being received up into the tower and received at the right hand of Tahoe. Okay. Now, we have Jesus rising into the air. Here we have Shakyamuni ascending into the air. And you remember Thessalonians. And at this point, say, Shakyamuni begins to speak to the universe on those things that will happen. Okay. And this is what Shakyamuni said. Those who try to teach the inner truth will be harassed by three types of enemies. Now, remember, Shakyamuni is in the tower. The doors have opened, and he speaks to the universe. He says, the first enemy that you're going to have when you try to speak the truth is you're going to have ignorant people. Okay. People who don't know. People who have no idea. And people who think you're making stuff up. They don't know. They, they just have nothing to, no, no idea. What's Second one, arrogant and cunning priests. Religious people. Enemies of God, he called them. And the third one are religious leaders who, fearing they will lose their status or profit, mislead the people to attack those who teach this. Arrogant and cunning priests, ignorant people, and religious leaders who, fearing they will lose their status or profit, mislead the people to attack those who teach this truth. And he went on to prophesy that suddenly... These bodhisattvas, which is, which, which is what's happening now. These, these entities that enter into the mind that cause people to reach out to one another. I mean, you know, don't lose sight of what's happening here. In, in spite of the fact of what you've seen with this, this guy shooting up that mosque in, in Israel, and in spite of the fact of what you've seen of, of this guy shooting those, those kids, and those Jewish kids, you have, uh, today you had the Jews and the Arabs coming together, in, uh, Muslims in New York, and you have the, uh, the, the Jews are doing everything in Israel to get the talks back on, it, it will happen, it's, 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 but all of these things are going to be set because there are so many people who can't deal with it, and, and in every single case the violence comes from fundamentalists, every single case, what they are. It does not speak of the majority of the people of the Muslim community because they're not interested in such things like this. But there are these people who are religious. And what a fundamental basic, a religious person who aligns themselves with politics. And they're the, tr they're the troubles. Now, what he said, that this beautiful thing will start happening to the earth 2,000 years after his death which is now, which is now, approximately now. And so then the ceremony of the air comes to an end and all returns to the earth, the tower disappears, and, you know, life goes on. And, 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 I, and I thought it was a very interesting, but there was something else interesting too that I, I thought I would share with you concerning Shakyamuni Buddha. And one of the things that um, he talked about was that he said, what will happen is that there will be a tremendous understanding, what he called the latter day of the law. The latter day of the law. Buddha talked about this a thousand years before the Bible was ever considered. The latter day of the law of the law. The Mormons call themselves Latter-day Saints. That's Buddhist. That's Buddhist. Zechariah 10.1 refers to the time of the latter reign. That's Buddhist. Because it was Shakyamuni Buddha who first talked of the latter day. And, and, and basically what he's talking about is he's talking about the time now. And he talks about that the Lord will make bright clouds and showers and talking about those things which we start to find within ourselves. Those things that we start to realize within ourselves as being the truth. And remember what we talked about when we started this. 
and this, this, is the, this is the essence of what you've, you've got to understand, because it doesn't make any difference anymore concerning religion. Religion is at death's door. Religion is at a point where these people are in a, in a, in a, in a death throw. They're absolutely self-destructive because they've accomplished nothing, and now they've gotten to the point where they're just shooting one another. But remember this, and it's very important. Within you is the kingdom of heaven. That's what Jesus said. But that heaven is above you. Earth is here. There's nothing connecting the two. You can stay down here and pray all night long, and all you're doing is mouthing words. And you know what the Apostle Paul said? The kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. So the point is, how are you going to reach that? How, see, prayer, what you call prayer, is simply a matter of earth communicating with heaven. Okay? And it's inside of you. So how do you touch that? You're down here praying and praying and praying, and nothing's happening. The world is an absolute cesspool because that's all they've done. They've, set, they've never been able to touch. Oh, you say, well, the Buddhists have done it and some of the Christians have done it. But those are not the power people. Those are not the people that have their hands on, 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 the, on the buttons of industry and all of these things. Those aren't the people that have their hands on the buttons of war. The people that have had their hands on the buttons of war and the buttons of industry are the ones that go into churches and they say, let's pray. And they're down here talking and never, ever, ever getting anywhere near to touching this up here, which is that higher part of the mind. You've got to raise yourself up there. And the only way, as that Jesus said to do it, is be persistent. 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 And you've got to touch and you've got to energize that. And once you then energize that, what happens? It's simple. If you're an electrician, you've made a circuit. You've opened a line. You've connected. And now stuff can start to flow. It's an electrical circuit, and it's what it is. It has nothing to do with, with, with religion, say. And so it's very, very important then, as, as, as we talk, whether we talk about Buddha, whether we talk about the things we were discussing here earlier, that we start to try to get together and understand. What do we need to do? Stay away from religious groups. Stay away from Christian organizations. Stay away from Buddhist organizations. Stay away from anything that's an organization and stay as an individual because there's a violence that is beyond belief emanating out of religion. And it's, a, 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 and it's something that the only possible way that this world is going to find itself back to Christ is by each individual person ascending into a harmony with nature and finding that in obedience to the way Jesus taught. And this is what I will stand any day of the week, and I will, I will call anybody down, that the failure of Christianity is because they have taken an antichrist perspective of not doing what Jesus said to do, and that is meditation. There's only one way that you can get from earth to heaven, meditation. Nothing else works. It's not possible any other way. And when you understand that, you kind of see why, you know, with all of the praying that's been done, and we've had churches on every street corner, and we've had television stations with all kinds of evangelists, and, and you've got all kinds of prayer groups, and with all of that, it is absolute, it's bizarre to me how violent and how corrupt the world has, and everything is here, isn't it? The possibilities of heaven are right here, but it's everybody following the group. And once you join that group, and once you join that church, remember you've got 50 million, 50 billion people who disagree with you. And now you've got people that'll shoot you. They had it today. I don't know if you were watching it today, that somebody defaced a, a Jewish uh, synagogue spraying red paint. They spread red, sprayed red paint over the place, you know. And, and, it, and, 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 you can, and you can just see it, where it comes from. You, you see the kids over in Palestine throwing rocks and shooting guns. What? Because of their group. Instead of, but if each person functions solely as an individual, you know, and then they're able to move and flow in harmony with, with everybody instead of saying, hey, I'm part of this group or you're part of that group. If you're not part of any group, then you can work for peace. But if you're part of a group, you can't because there's too many other groups that disagree with you. So what's your, your responsibility is, and then in speaking to other people, what do you believe? You say, I don't believe anything. I just am. I am, part of the, I am part of the earth. I am part of heaven. I am part of the universe. When I went down to um, uh, Dave Preston's funeral, and it was, it, the, the room was filled with black people. There was a couple of hundred black people there. I said, I want to make one thing clear. I'm a Christian. I'm a Buddhist. I'm a Muslim. And I'm a Hindu. And we get, we get safe. You know where I'm coming from. That's where I'm coming from. And that's what you've got to be. And then who can fight with you? You can't. Because you're part of everything. But if I say I'm a Christian, there were some guys with round colored caps on the top of their head. Bang, I'm isolated from them. You see. So I am that I am. That's what God said. 
What was his name? I am. He didn't say he was a Christian. He didn't say he was a Jew. And you see, and understand something too. We talked about it this morning. Sometimes you look and say, geez, these Muslims, what are they so ticked off about? Look at, they're, they're shooting up people and look at these people in Palestine. Okay? Your God, the God that your religion created, ordered your chosen people to go in and pillage and rape and steal their land. They got a right to be mad. I mean, I can show you in your holy book where your holy God told your chosen people to go in and pillage and kill and leave nothing standing and take the virgins for yourself and kill everything else. I can show you the book in the Bible. And you wonder why they're ticked off. Would you throw rocks? Certainly you throw rocks. And, 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 the, and the, who do the Christians side with? The chosen people. They took everything they got by, by force, by violence. Raping, pillaging, looting, and then they wonder why these people are mad. I'll tell you right now, they don't have any power, but if the American Indians had a power, they'd have a right. They were ripped off big time by this great, wonderful Christian government. Gave them $24 for Manhattan. Is this something? You can't even get lunch in Manhattan for $24. You rip people, and I told you, what, well, I, said, what? I used to go to the movies, Joe, and I rooted for John Wayne to kill all the Indians. I didn't know what the heck they were mad at. They're coming down with their spears and swords or their arrows and go, oh, la, 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 la. Hey, kill him. Here comes John Wayne. Yay. The government brainwashed me because the government never told me what they were mad about. I didn't know we were there ripping off, taking everything that there was there. That was theirs. It was their property. Somebody comes into your house and says, I'm taking this. <laughs> and, and, and what is it? And then the cops come and say, get out. The man wants to have your property. Right? Well, yeah, well, just as bad. So don't, I just beg of you to stay as an individual and follow your own course and don't get involved with these violent religious organizations and, 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 and just be a member of everything, and including vegetarians and horticulturists and everything else. Just, 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 just be yourself, and then you won't be in any trouble. And, and, and then you'll be ready for the Christ who has returned. I saw a guy, did you see this guy on television at TBN today? They have this, this fat guy that gets on, and he's, he's got his big church here, and he's saying, they want to say that Jesus has been seen in California. I tell you, Jesus is not in California. And this way he's telling this game. Not in California. Gently he's in California. See, he doesn't understand that Jesus says, at that time you will know I am in the Father, you and me, and I in you. If there's anybody in California, he's in them. But, but see, they, don't, they won't read what he says. They don't want to know this. They're waiting for the coming of the Lord to rule and reign for a thousand years. And what's the Lord say? My kingdom is not of this world. The kingdom does not come so you can see it because the kingdom is within you. Oh, rip it out. We don't want to pay attention to that. We don't want to. I wonder if it was hard to learn to talk like that. Yeah. Huh? I wonder if it was hard to learn to talk like that. They learned that in the seminary school or cemetery school. Oh, yeah. yeah. Just don't get involved with them. You know, let them, let them fall apart. I love, see, I follow Jesus Christ. You know what Jesus Christ said about them? They said, oh, Jesus, look at that beautiful church. You know what he said? Ah, for cock, that is not going to be one rock left standing on the other. He let it fall. He said, don't look at that. In other words, don't get involved with it. What did he do? He went in the mountains. As soon as the crowds came around, they said, let's sing amazing grace. He said, get lost. He went to the mountains. <laughs> That's my kind of guy. That's the kind of guy you can follow. You go to the mountain with him, sit around a campfire and listen to him, but don't listen to these people. He never did. A little different tonight. I don't even know what we did, but whatever we did, we did. And thank you for uh, sharing the time with us. And uh,